with the sun's heat beating down from the sky above them, this team of archaeologists in the south of Spain must have been exhausted. Digs are tough business anyway, but the country's warm climate surely makes things even harder. Luckily, though, all their efforts would soon be vindicated. These people were about to find something in the ground, and none of them could have predicted what it would be. Archaeologists unearthed a coffin in Spain, that'll change everything you know about European history. The team were working that day on the site of an ancient Roman villa, which had already been subject to archaeological investigations in the past. Obviously, these earlier rounds of excavations didn't uncover everything, and these experts had the wherewithal to keep looking. It was this dedication that, in the end, culminated in the discovery of an elaborate coffin. This ancient sarcophagus was adorned in shapes and patterns, evidently the result of some intricate carving work long ago. But what did all the markings mean, exactly? Were these specific designs significant? Clearly, the researchers needed to work hard and carefully in order to get to the bottom of these questions. The experts eventually managed to trace the coffin back to the 6th century, which was an interesting period in this region of southern Spain. At that time, tribes of Germanic tribes were sweeping through Europe taking over areas once under the control of the Roman Empire. Often, these people would take existing Roman structures and refashion them for their own uses. This coffin, then, appeared to represent evidence of this exact situation having once occurred in the area. The site had been home to a Roman villa, but it had gone on to become something else entirely. And this shocked the archaeologists, as they weren't expecting a find quite like this. Spain is a fascinating place for historians and archaeologists, particularly for those concerned with ancient Rome. The region was once a pivotal spot within the civilization's sphere of influence, and evidence of that past can be seen throughout the country today. In fact, the area owes much of its present character to the Romans. The Romans arrived on the Iberian Peninsula back in 206 BC and came from the south. They battled with the peoples of the land and eventually overcame them in the area of modern-day Seville. Victory here represented the beginning of the Roman era in the region, which would endure for some seven centuries. Though the Basques and Celts in Spain's northern regions kept the Romans at bay for many years, that part took until the year 19 BC to finally be conquered, which was almost 200 years since southern Spain had been taken. From this point on, though, the whole swathe of land was firmly under Roman control. The Mercia region of modern Spain was once a really important area for the Romans, as it was abundant in useful raw materials. The place was rich in minerals that were used to forge silver coins, while the area also contained plenty of esparto grass. And this was apparently weaved into a textile. Mercia was also home to abundant sources of nourishment, which was clearly beneficial for the empire. Wheat fields provided grain to help keep soldiers fed, while olive oil and fish sauces were also produced in the area. Aside from that, valuable and useful rocks like marble and sandstone were also mined in Mercia. The Romans extracted a lot from Mercia, then, but they also brought their own innovations to the region. Novel farming methods were a particularly notable change, and they transformed the region's landscape. In addition to introducing new ways of working the land, the Romans also built their villas in the area. When we use the word villa what comes to mind? Well, when it comes to the ancient Romans it generally refers to one or several buildings raised on agricultural lands. Laborers would normally live in these places and enjoy easy access to work the land. In fact, many ruins of such structures can be found across the south of Spain. By the time of the Roman Empire's greatest strength, the villas throughout the Iberian Peninsula were largely workhouses. That is, laborers lived there and worked the land, while the owners would only visit. Over the following centuries, though, changes within the empire started to have an impact on these properties. The Roman Empire eventually started to disintegrate, and as you might imagine, the inhabitants of Spain felt the impact. Even the more wealthy members of the civilization ran into difficulties, so those running farms had to make changes. Where once they only visited their villas, they now moved in permanently. This, in turn, saw the buildings themselves become more elaborate. One great example of a Roman villa in Spain can be found today at the Los Villaricos archaeological site. This place was apparently built during the 1st century AD, though works continued on it for hundreds of years. Throughout this time, the nature of the villa changed alongside its layout and design. Historians posit that Los Villaricos is a prime example of a Roman villa. Why is that, though? Well, the site apparently has all the hallmarks you'd expect to see. It's split into a residential and working area, with the latter containing buildings used for manufacturing and storage. In this specific place, it was olive oil and wine that were being made. 
With all the changes experienced on the Los Billericos site, it can be difficult to fully get to grips with its history. Having said that, experts have identified four main phases in its timeline, which makes it a little easier to understand. The first phase takes us back to the middle of the first century before ending roughly 100 years later. This period in the history of the Mercia region broadly corresponds with a rise in Roman villas being constructed there. Plenty of other examples of ruins like this have been discovered throughout the area, though none are quite like Los Villaricos. In fact, its scale and highly preserved state are pretty much unparalleled. The next developmental phase of Los Villaricos history is believed to have occurred between the late 2nd and 3rd centuries. During this time, the whole place was completely transformed. Old structures were torn down and new ones were raised, which gave the property the shape we can still see today. This was the peak of Los Villarico's beauty and functionality when luxuries such as the thermal baths were installed. The next phase occurred during the 4th century and the beginning of the 5th. Los Villarico's experienced some changes around then, though none were quite as dramatic as the ones seen in the previous phase. New mosaic floors were apparently set down, while the production areas were altered in a way that implies business was declining during this period. The fourth and final developmental phase of this remarkable villa started in the 5th century and ended in the first half of the 6th. This lines up with the point in history when the Roman Empire fell into a state of collapse, reflected in the fact that production on the site apparently ceased around this time. People continued to live in and around the area, though, and major changes had come to the site by this point. The coffin discovered in 2021 by archaeologists at Los Villaricos likely comes from this period in the site's history. When they dated the coffin, the experts found that it came from the 6th century. This was when the empire was failing and Spain was being conquered by Germanic tribes including the Visigoths. Who were the Visigoths, though? Well, this group were the western contingent of the wider group of peoples known as the Goths, with the eastern tribes known as the Ostrogoths. Taken as a whole, the wider tribe were actually pivotal to the Roman Empire's disintegration and the heralding of Europe's medieval period of history. The Goths went on to steamroll across Europe conquering lands which had once been under Roman control. Areas from the east of the continent all the way down to Spain in the south had fallen into the Goths' sphere of influence. Yes, mainland Europe had suddenly become an entirely different place. Many of the tribes that made up the Gothic culture once practiced a German form of paganism. But then throughout the 5th and 6th centuries they apparently started converting to Christianity. During these earlier centuries of Gothic Christianity, though, people abided by a version of the religion that wasn't accepted by the Romans. From a Roman perspective, the forms of Christianity originally practiced by the Goths were considered to be heretical, according to History.com. Around the 7th century, however, the Visigoths took on Catholicism for themselves. In fact, they even built Catholic churches on the Iberian Peninsula, many of which are still standing up to the present day. It was the Visigoths who eventually moved into the Mercia region and the Los Villaricos site, which the tribe repurposed for themselves. And they transformed the patio area into something much more somber. Apparently, the Visigoths used it as a burial place, which would explain the coffin discovered there by the archaeologists in 2021. Speaking to Historia National Geographic, one of the archaeologists involved in the excavation explained the team's work. Rafael González Fernández explained that the experts were working in the section of the site that had been turned into a necropolis by the Visigoths. And it was here that they made their discovery. The team apparently hadn't been anticipating a discovery as impressive as the one they eventually made. In fact, when the experts first came across the coffin, they presumed it was something else like a regular old column. As González put it plainly to British newspaper The Times in July 2021, we weren't expecting this spectacular discovery. If the priceless relic wasn't an ancient column in the ground, then what exactly was it? Well, the discovery turned out to be a sarcophagus, and it was covered in some amazing carvings. The coffin's exterior was adorned with wonderful patterns and shapes, with some taking the form of ivy leaves. But they weren't the most interesting carvings for the archaeologists to ponder. Arguably the most notable shape carved into the lid of this coffin was a Cairo symbol, which has interesting implications. This shape is made by combining the first pair of letters in the Greek language term for Christ. These are chi, which is denoted by an X shape, and rho, which looks like a P. Apparently, the Cairo symbol is representative of Jesus' resurrection. The Cairo symbol showed up in numerous works of art dating back to Christianity's earlier days. But perhaps it was the monogram's association with the Roman military that led it to become so commonly seen throughout Europe. 
Apparently, the Cairo was adopted by the Empire's forces after the Emperor Constantine had a vision when he was saying a prayer. The Cairo symbol on the lid of the coffin at Los Villaricos was undoubtedly eye-catching for the experts who'd found it. Though they still had to check what was actually inside the sarcophagus. Unsurprisingly, they found old bones, but interestingly it seems that they belonged to more than one person. We have no idea who the people inside the sarcophagus were, and we may never find out. But the discovery will hopefully add some color to what researchers already know about Los Villarico's transformation from a Roman agricultural site into a Visigothic burial place. Though the discovery of this coffin was particularly notable for the archaeological community, it wasn't the first burial to be uncovered at the Los Villarico's site. Yet the other finds exhibit different kinds of features. Some are graves compassed of stone, while others are made from bricks or pottery. In essence, all these things illustrate the different ways the site was used over the centuries. The remnants of another burial place were actually uncovered at Los Villaricos back in the 1990s. Unfortunately for experts, though, this tomb had clearly been tampered with over the years. People had reportedly stolen stuff from the site, which makes the job of researchers all the more difficult to do. Nonetheless, certain details could be extrapolated from the find, according to Mercia today. It was clear to experts, for example, that they'd found a tomb for two individuals who were separated by a wall. Little remained of the bodies there aside from a few pieces of bone, but much could still be seen of the stonework decorating the chamber. The sheer variety of the kinds of burials at Los Villaricos really illustrate how much the area changed over the centuries. Much can be deciphered from the study of a culture's burial practices, and Los Villaricos only reinforces the point. With different systems of belief in place at varying points in time, the way in which people were buried there changed. The excavations at Los Villaricos are the culmination of the efforts of many different people from a variety of institutions. The University of Mercia has left a particular mark on the site, though many other archaeologists have also been involved over the years. Yep, it seems that interest in Roman history shows no signs of abating any time soon. A local councillor spoke to National Geographic about the discovery of the coffin and what comes next for it. Translated from Spanish, Diego J. Baluda commented, this sarcophagus shows the archaeological power of Los Villaricos and confirms our commitment to the University of Murcia. Undoubtedly, the piece will occupy a preferential place in the Museum of the City of Mula. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.